Righto, tally ho there champs and welcome to the show. Apologies for my voice. So, XPS 15 versus the new 2017 MacBook Pro 15 inch. So the new MacBook Pro has Kaby Lake processors, has a Radeon Pro 560 graphics. They've modified the keyboard and they've actually modified the internals. They've done some work on the motherboard there. They're the main changes, but is it enough to catch up to the XPS 15? Well, let's have a look. In terms of price, well, obviously the XPS 15 is better value. You're going to be saving for comparable configurations, $1,000, maybe more. And they'll always have deals on, so you can actually sometimes get the XPS 15 9560 for $1,000 cheaper with 32 gigs RAM, which the MacBook Pro doesn't offer. So it's tremendous value. Some people can justify the Mac price. You know who you are. But in terms of value, the XPS 15 is better. Design and build, both are premium laptops. Both made out of aluminium. I really do like the MacBook Pro's color. I do like its uniform thickness. Its fit and finish is superb. The tolerances are bang on. When you open it up though, it does look a little bit goofy with unsymmetrical bezels and sort of like that big trackpad. And if you look at Mac's all aluminium build, it is nice, but a lot of manufacturers have nicer finishes on the deck and palm rest there. And this is where I think the Dell XPS looks better. That gorgeous infinity edge display, that carbon fiber palm rest. When you open that XPS 15 up, it looks fantastic. You really get taken into your content with that infinity edge display. So they're both premium. I'd say the fit and finish on the Mac is a little bit better, but in terms of build quality, I'd say the XPS 15 is better because you just look at the gauge of the aluminium it's a lot thicker on the XPS 15 and it's a lot more rigid and also it's able to cool the CPUs a lot better in terms of looks overall it's going to be personal preference now size and weight the XPS 15 has a slightly smaller footprint in terms of weight they both start at four pounds the XPS 15 with the big battery is 4.5 pounds and that's 1.8 kilos is four pounds and two kilos for at 4.5 pounds with the XPS 15 with the big battery. The MacBook Pro is 15.6 millimeters thick and the XPS 15 is 17 millimeters thick at its thickest point. Now the MacBook Pro does look thinner but don't be fooled. Its edges are thin, but it has like a bulging underside. So it is a bit thicker than it looks, but it is 1.4 millimeters thinner than the XPS 15. But the XPS 15 has more efficient cooling and it has a bigger battery. So that's something to consider there. There's not much between them in terms of thickness and weight, whatever. It's very similar. When it comes to the keyboard and trackpad, I really find it hard to like the MacBook Pro keyboard. It's very jarring. They have improved this one. I'll give them that. It's not as clacky, it's not as loud, and it feels a bit better compared to the Skylake model, but it does still feel jarring. What you don't want to do is use a keyboard like the Surface laptop and then go to the MacBook Pro. It's a night and day difference there. The XPS 15 isn't the best keyboard in the world, but I think it is better than the MacBook Pro. It just has more travel. It just feels better on the fingers. And overall, it is a better keyboard in my opinion, but this will be personal preference. Trackpad, the MacBook Pro has this enormous trackpad. The downside to it is you will trigger it off with your palms, thumbs, when you're typing, if you're a little bit heavy handed, if you're light and you sort of got like a ninja typing style you probably won't activate it but i activate it and still a lot of people activate it there is still some issues with the palm rejection there but in terms of tracking it is the best and its click is the best too the xps 15 as good as it gets on windows it's not that far behind the macbook pro again this could be personal preference too in terms of ports i think i have to give this to the xps 15 full size hdmi sd card slot two usb type a's thunderbolt port it is two times so just remember that but all in all it has basically everything you need and the macbook pro has all thunderbolt ports which can have advantages you have to ask yourself are you going to connect to multiple 4k monitors and thunderbolt dashes and stuff like that but if you do not do that the xps 15 has better port configuration and you won't have to be living in dongle hell you will get used to using dongles but it does annoy me using the mac now in terms of sound the clear winner here is the macbook pro it does have better sounds probably one of the best on any laptop the xps 15 does have decent sound but it's not as good as the macbook pro an easy win for the macbook pro there now in terms of display think are a little bit interested here i'll concentrate on the higher end display on the xps 15 you get a full 
100% Adobe RGB color gamut with the XPS 15. It's 4K and it's touch. With the MacBook Pro, you get an 1880 by 2800 16 by 10 ratio display. It's supposed to get brighter than the XPS 15, but I have both laptops at full brightness here and you can clearly see the XPS 15 is brighter. So I don't know if they've messed with the brightness with these new models or I've just got one that isn't that bright. And also even if you compare it to the Surface Laptop, the Surface Laptop is brighter too. You can clearly see that. And even on my camera, I can see that. And in my editing software, I can see that both those displays are brighter than the Mac. So I don't know what's going on there. They are both fantastic screens. The Mac has P3 color gamut there, Rec 709. That is a wide color gamut too. It's not quite as wide as Adobe RGB. And you can see them here together. You can see the XPS 15's display has more punch has more contrast it's sharper and you would expect that because it's a higher resolution in terms of glare they both have glare but i'd say the macbook pro controls glare a little bit better there so the xps 15 has a better screen but no one is ever going to complain with the macbook pro screen in terms of battery life you get about eight hours on the MacBook Pro and with the 4K XPS 15, you get about seven, seven and a half. If you have the full HD, you'll get about 10 hours on the XPS 15. So battery life is fairly even. If you compare the 4K to the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Pro will get you half an hour, 45 minutes longer. But if you do anything like open Photoshop or something like that, for some reason, the Mac really does start chewing the battery a lot quicker. In terms of performance, they're both similar hardware now. They both have 7th generation 45 watt quad core i7s. You can get the 3.1 gigahertz model with the MacBook Pro. Do not get the 3.1 gigahertz. Just stick with the stock CPU on the MacBook Pro because it does throttle, because it does get warm. It gets up to 100 degrees and you will not get the full boost performance out of these processors unless you're doing single thread. If you're taxing all cores, it is going to throttle. Now the XPS 15 can sustain its boost up to 3.4 gigahertz pretty much indefinitely. So it does perform a little bit better just because of that. If you're doing synthetic benchmark, Marks, there's not much difference because the benchmarks aren't really that long enough to make the CPU throttle. The XPS 15 has a GTX 1050 4 gigabyte model, 50 watt TDP. It is more powerful than the 4 gigabyte AMD Radeon 560 graphics card there. The GTX 1050 is more powerful, so you're gonna have better gaming. You also have better video editing performance, especially in Premiere Pro. Both of them can play 4K content back, no problem. But when you apply color correction and a LUT to the 4k video in premiere you would have to drop the macbook pro down to half to get the same smooth playback as you do at full with the xps 15. now video encoding time it like literally takes nearly double the amount of time to render in premiere pro with the MacBook Pro versus the XPS 15. And that is true in Final Cut 2, unless you are using H.264 or a codec supported by QuickSync, which I will demonstrate in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Now in Final Cut Pro, it's not necessary to drop the quality down there. You will get smooth playback with color correction applied with 4K content. But just remember, even if you do use Final Cut Pro, there's gonna be times when you wanna use After Effects or DaVinci or something like that, and the XPS 15, is just going to perform better because it can maintain those clock speeds for longer and it has a more powerful graphics card and also you can get 32 gigs ram and i can easily max out the 16 gigs ram in the macbook pro of course any modern operating system will manage the ram properly so you don't run out of ram but i'm easily getting up to the maximum allowed ram for each app so the 32 gigabytes of ram is really important if you're going to be video editing now when it comes to ssd speeds the macbook pro has the fastest ssd speeds if you're a video editor and you're reading and writing files to your ssd every day that's a potential place where the macbook pro can fail and because the ram is soldered and because the ssd is soldered and the internal heats are getting up to 100 degrees i'm a little bit concerned for its longevity and once that ssd is gone you can't just replace it it's basically for landfill at that point and clearly apple prefer 
throttling the CPU rather than kicking on the fans. This seems like a deliberate choice and I have been told in the comments in one of my videos that yes you can use a fan utility on the Mac and change that so it doesn't throttle so much you can kick on the fans harder so you should be able to get better performance if you do that. With the XPS 15 you might get a Samsung, you might get a Toshiba but the good thing about the XPS 15 is you can upgrade the RAM and you can upgrade the SSDs so you can put a 960 Pro in and you can also upgrade to the 970 Pro when that comes out. I'll wrap it up there guys you're just going to have to decide for yourself which one's better for you in terms of just performance and ports and upgradability 32 gigs ram better display I, I can't give the win to any other computer than the xps 15 you may have some reasons why you need the mac and yeah sure go for it but the better computer is the xps 15 so if this video is helpful give me a thumbs up there i've got lots more tech content coming soon and watch out for the premiere pro versus final cut pro you'll be surprised with the results with that one and until next time guys tally ho